Welcome back to the fourth episode of our inventory system for Unreal Engine. Today, we will create the slot widget and three new items. Let's get started. First, let's close some files that we no longer need. Then we go to our content drawer in the folder UI Widgets. Create a new folder under User Interface, Widget Blueprint, and name it WB underscore Item Slot Master. Open the widget. First of all, we need a size box. Drag it onto WB Item Slot Master. Select the size box. Set the width and height override checkboxes to 70 by 70. Next, we need a button. Drag the button onto the size box. Change the widget from fill screen to desired on screen at the top. Select the button again. Expand style. Then normal. Change the tint color hex to the value here. Confirm with OK. Change the button, draw as to image, so that the button is displayed in a nice rectangle. Now expand the hovered. Set the tint color hex value to this one. Set the alpha value to 0.7. Confirm the whole thing. Also change the draw as to image. You can tell that it is set as an image because a small rectangle appears here. Now we hold down the left shift key, right click the mouse to copy the settings from hovered. Go down to pressed, still holding down the left shift key, and left click the mouse. This pastes the settings we just copied into hovered as set a good. Then we set the normal and pressed padding to zero. Now we search for an overlay. Select it. Drag it onto the button. Select the overlay again and drag it onto the overlay here. Now we select the upper overlay. Set the padding to 2. We change the horizontal and vertical alignment to fill. This creates our frame for the slot. Now we search for a border and drag the border onto the upper overlay. We slide the border between the two overlays so that the overlay is placed over the border. If we don't do this, the border will cover our overlay and we won't be able to see it. Make sure that the border and the lower overlay are inside the upper overlay in the hierarchy. We rename the border to background. If you have selected any element here and press the F2 key, you can rename it directly. Now, make our background a variable. Change the horizontal and vertical alignment to fill. Set the padding to 8. Change the brush color to black. Set the alpha value to 0.7. Confirm this. Now select the lower overlay. Rename it Info Layer. Set the checkbox to Is Variable to access it in the graph. Set the horizontal and vertical alignment to fill. Now we search for an image. Drag the image onto the info layer and select it. Rename it to icon image. You can also do it directly in the top right corner. Set the checkbox to is variable. Change the horizontal and vertical alignment to fill. For our icon, we select a preview image. It doesn't matter which one we choose because it will be overwritten later using the information from our inventory slot. I'm going to use text underscore tools underscore O2 here. Wooden hammer with A. Hmm. Wooden nail? No idea. We set the padding to 8. Next, we search for a border. Drag the border onto the info layer. Then we search for a text block. and drag it onto the border. Select the border and rename it to Quantity Layer. Make it a variable. Set the slot horizontal alignment to right alignment. Set the content horizontal alignment to center and the vertical alignment to center as well. We change the brush color to this color. 
We leave the alpha value at 0.8. Now we select the text block and rename it to quantity text. Then make it a variable again. Set the padding values left to 5, top to 1, right to 4, and bottom to 1. As an example, we entered a 10 for quantity. Change the front size to 12. Set the shadow color alpha value to 1. This has now given our text a shadow. This makes it easier for our eyes to read the quantity. Now we take the text block again and drag it onto the info layer. Rename it to weight. Set that as a variable too. Change the horizontal alignment to right and the vertical alignment to bottom. The text value, for example, to 1050 weight. The font size to 7. The shadow color alpha value to 1 again. That's it for the design of the widget, so now we'll move on to the graph. We delete all nodes here because we don't need them. We create a customer event. Name it update slot data. The event has the input value slot. As the type, we search for s underscore inventory slot. Grab the slot pin and select promote variable. Name this variable slot data. Set the checkbox to instance editable. You can also do this by clicking on the eye here. Then the checkbox below changes from instance editable as nots. This makes the variable public, so you can access the variable from outside this widget. Now we check the slot to see if there is an item in it or not. We do this using the function created by our blueprint function library. Is slot empty? Promoting the result to a variable. Rename it to slot has item. Now we make a break on the slot to be able to read the information. Expand it because we need the soft reference from our item data asset. Promote it to a variable. Rename it to item data asset without spaces. Now we want to display our info layer based on the result of whether the slot is empty or not. If the slot is empty, it should be hidden as off. We go to the design and select our info layer and hide it by default. To do this, we set the default value of visible to hidden. Let's go back to the graph. Let's make a new function for this because we'll be using it more often. Visibility. Name the function set widget visibility. As a tip, this could also be done as a blueprint function library because you need them often. Our function now has two input values. One is the target. This is our widget that we want to show or hide. To do this, we select the type widget as the object reference. And once the variable visible of type boolean. Now we grab the pin of target and pull it out. Search for the function set visibility. Grab the visibility pin, pull it out, and search for the node select. The select allows us in this case to decide whether to set the value visible or hidden based on the condition of the visibility pin. I will be doing a tutorial on the select soon, which I will link to here later. The select node can do a lot more.
We now drag the input visibility onto the wildcard pin and can now say that if false set it to hidden and if true to visibility. That's actually all there is to it. Go back from the event graph. Drag our info layer in as a get and call our set widget visibility function. Connect the pins. Now we get the slot has item as a get. Make a branch. Just by the way, if you would like to know more about the branch and all the operators like XOR, NAND, or NOR, etc., you are welcome to watch the video I linked to above on the left. Now we get the variable item data asset. If our slot contains an item, we read the item information. Since the asset is stored as a soft object reference, we first have to load it with an async load asset before we can read the information. After it has been loaded, we call our interface get item asset. Here you have to be careful that the pin does not come from the exec pin, but from the complete pin. Hold down the Alt key and click on the connection to remove it. Now drag the complete pin on our execution pin from our interface. Now we get the icon once. Then get wait. Now we take the image as get and set the icon with the function set brush from soft texture. We connect the icon pin to soft texture. Connect the execution. Now we take wait text. Search for set text. Select set text here. Now we take the wait pin, pull it out and search for multiply. Alternatively, you can also search for the asterisk, also known as asterisk. Now we take the quantity pin from the slot and connect it to the second pin from the multiplay. Now we take the calculated result and connect it to the text pin. The float value is automatically converted into a text with a node float to text. It automatically converts the float value into a text format. Now we select the two nodes of weight and set text. Copy them with Ctrl C and with Ctrl V we insert them next to them. Now we can take our quantity text variable. Drag it here so that it is a little to the left of the name of the variable until the info appears change note to read quantity text. This replaces the node variable. Now connect quantity from the slot to the text pin of quantity set text. Again, a node is created that converts the integer into a text. Now we still need the information whether the item is stackable, which we read from the item asset as projects. Because if the item is not stackable, we want to hide the quantity layer. We do this with our visibility function. Connect the is stackable bin with the visibility pin. Save the whole thing. That's it for our item slots master widget for now. We go back to the content drawer. Create a new user widget. We name this WB underscore item slot. The reason for this is that later, when we use drag and drop operation, we can use the item slot master widget as a preview. The WB underscore item slot widget we have just created will contain all the operations. We open the widget we just created. Go to the graph. 
Then to class settings. Here we change the parent class. Search for WB underscore item slot master and say it should be our parent. If we now go to the designer, we see that we now have the widget, but the whole hierarchy is missing here. The hierarchy is there, but we can't see it and we can't insert any other widgets here either. This is only possible in the parent class item slot master. Back to the graph. Delete the nodes here. I hope you were able to learn something new and that with the part two feet of this episode, we will finish building the items container as shown at the beginning of this episode, see the slots in the inventory. If you have any questions or suggestions for improvement regarding my videos, please let me know in the comment. I appreciate every compliment or constructive criticism. I would be very happy about a like or a subscription. See you next time.